Gaming Volta, Gaming Volta, wherefore art thou Gaming Volta? If you're into autonomous cars, cloud mining, or massively overkill displays, you were probably pretty pleased with NVIDIA's CES 2018 presentation. Gamers, however, not so much. It's been almost two years since the company first unleashed Pascal in the form of the GTX 1080, and while we've seen multiple other 10 series cards come out since then, we haven't really seen anything all that new from NVIDIA's desktop GPU team since. I mean, sure, we got the Volta the base Titan V, but counting that as a desktop GPU is ludicrous. Which is why so many people, including us, were really hoping for at least some sort of mention of desktop Volta at this year's CES. Unfortunately, those dreams were well and truly mutilated. But why was that? Just why was Volta MIA at the event? What does NVIDIA have up its sleeve besides Farmer's Tan, and when the heck are gaming Volta cards finally gonna see the light of day? Well, we don't know any of that, but we dang sure can speculate. First, let's take a look at why Volta skipped CES 2018. The most probable and possibly the most obvious reason is that NVIDIA just doesn't announce these things at CES. While NVIDIA likes to showboat at various events throughout any given year, they've historically preferred to announce their new generation of gaming GPUs at their own events. NVIDIA could well be saving Volta for a full announcement at or around the time of GTC, their annual GPU Technology Conference, which is an acronym for an acronym. That conference will kick off in late March. Adding weight to this theory is that NVIDIA first launched Pascal around the same time in 2016. While this is certainly the most plausible explanation, it's not the only one. Another possible reason we didn't see Volta's final form at CES, and might not even see it around the time of GTC, is that there's no real rush. Or at least not from what we can tell. NVIDIA has essentially cornered almost every part of this consumer GPU market with Pascal. Whenever AMD released something new, NVIDIA followed up with their own offering. We've seen it happen with the RX 400 and 500 series AMD cards, and with the release of the GTX 1070 Ti, we've seen it happen again with RX Vega as well. All NVIDIA had to do to take the wind out of the Vega 56 and 64 sales was to sell lower bend GTX 1080 chips as 1070 Ti's, and bam! Bob's your less powerful, but just powerful enough to beat Vega Uncle. If Vega posed at least a slight threat to the 1080 Ti's performance crown, we'd have likely already seen some GeForce Volta news by now. But I won't go too far down that rabbit hole since I've been there a few times already. P.S. By the way, Vega sucks. The fairly recent release of the 1070 Ti and the Star Wars editions of Titan XP show even further that Nvidia is still very content to ride the Pascal train. And if rumors are to be believed, they're also planning on dropping Max-Q versions of the 1050 and 1050 Ti relatively soon. All of those cards would seem to point to the continued long life of Pascal, but just how long is yet to be seen. Dropping Volta as soon as March or even April could cannibalize the sales of the company's Pascal cards completely. So there's a chance that Nvidia plans to squeeze out as much cash from the current architecture as possible before launching the new one. Announcing Volta at GTC, but then only selling the cards a few months after at Computex seems to be the much more likely option here. If we grasp to what NVIDIA did with Pascal, the 1080 was the first to launch, with the 1070 following a month after, and then they only dropped the 1066 gig when the 480 was released, and then only the 1063 gig when the 470 was released. I'm anticipating that if we are going to see Volta this year, it's only going to be in the higher end SKUs, which really won't won't be the car that many of us actually want to buy. Which brings me to my next point. Further adding to NVIDIA's apparent lack of urgency is AMD's GPU roadmap. As AMD outlined in their presentation at CES, while their next-gen GPUs, codenamed Navi, are expected to be relatively game-changing, manufactured on the 7 nanometer process and whatever, those are only set to arrive sometime next year. That means that in 2018, or this year, NVIDIA GPUs will remain the go-to cards for most gamers, even if they don't release Volta at all the this year. NVIDIA's own competition in 2018, at least in the desktop GPU space, will be NVIDIA. And that's not a good thing for us consumers. The Volta cards, which will undoubtedly prove to be superior to Pascal, will dominate the scene at pretty much whatever price tag NVIDIA decides to slap on them because they have no competition. NVIDIA, as I mentioned in my review of the 1070 Ti, seems only willing to step up to the plate for the consumers when there's pressure by AMD. They'll drop the super high end no problem, as evidenced by the Titan V's launch and then pulling out the 1070 and 1080 in 2000. 2016, but then when it comes to the 1050s, 1060s, and other cards, they only launch them to corner a market. Unless AMD really has something better than another freaking Polaris refresh for their mid-tier cards this year, I don't see incentive for NVIDIA to release a Volta 1060 or otherwise. We'll be stuck with higher-end cards until Radeon Technology Groups can get its freaking act together. Of course, all of this is at least partly dependent on just how superior Volta will be to Pascal. After all, a Volta 2080 or 1180 or whatever the heck kind of stupid name 
naming scheme NVIDIA decides to go with, I'm personally partial to Poopy Beastmaster 50,008. But if it doesn't offer enough of a significant performance uplift over the Pascal cards at a higher price, no one would buy them. Or at least they shouldn't. Unfortunately, we won't know what kind of GTX Volta cards have to offer until we finally get our grubby little hands on them. But let's not forget, a wild Volta has already appeared. Well, definitely not a perfect representation of what we can expect from GTX Volta, the Big Daddy Titan V does give us a semblance of a reference point, so let's look into it a little. First, let's take a minute to reacquaint ourselves with the Titan V. As Nvidia likes to tout, the Titan V is the most powerful advanced graphics card ever made, and they're right in doing so. The card is built on the 12 nanometer process, is equipped with 5,120 CUDA cores, 320 texture units, features a base and boost clock of 1,214.55 respectively, 12 gigabytes of HBM2 memory with a total bandwidth of 652.8 gigabytes per second, and has a total TDP of 250 watts. That's a lot of card for a lot of money. $3,000 worth of hard-earned Benjamins. But as NVIDIA also states, the Titan V isn't aimed at gamers. All of its specs, along with 640 tensor cores, means it's built for applications like AI, machine learning, and other interesting stuff I won't mention because big words intimidate me. But just because it isn't built for gaming doesn't mean that it can't be used for the purpose. No matter which games are thrown at it, the Titan V absolutely crushes it. When compared to a GTX 10 ATI, RX Vega 64, and even the new Titan XPs, the Titan V comes out on top every time, almost without fail, and usually by a fairly large margin. We're talking tens and dozens of frames here, people. Yes, even without really trying, it's built for scientific research. After all, the Titan V is easily the most powerful gaming GPU out right now. But almost no gamers would drop three grand on a graphics card, and nor should they, which is where consumer Volta cards should come in. Based almost entirely on speculation, since it's impossible to even semi-accurately predict the performance of GeForce Volta by simply seeing what the Titan V can do and scaling it back a little, we might be in for about a 10 to 15% gaming performance jump from Pascal to Volta. One of the most notable improvements to come out of the Titan V coverage though, which may or may not trickle down like Reagan Economics, is the much better performance of Volta in async compute tests, which means tremendously better gaming in Vulkan or DirectX 12 VPIs. APIs, not VPIs, APIs, that's what I meant to say. It's been a large flaw in NVIDIA's previous architecture that they've been able to mask with better driver implementations than AMD, but obviously they have to start implementing it at a hardware level sooner or later, so async compute, here we go, hopefully. The performance of these mysterious, still very much unofficial cards is even harder to predict since no one can even pin down the memory type that they'll be shipping with. Even though the Titan V sports HBM2 memory, it's highly unlikely that all GeForce Volta cards will follow suit. HBM2 memory is generally harder and pricier to manufacture than GDR5 and the like, which is likely partly to blame for AMD's Vegas shocking lack of availability. Keeping that in mind, we're far more likely to see NVIDIA stick with GDR5 or 5X or even make the jump to GDR6, which is rumored to launch sometime later this year, which is highly unlikely, but not impossible. If NVIDIA does indeed decide to ship GeForce Volta cards with HBM2 memory, we're betting it'll only be available on the top of the range cards, like the Volta equivalent of the 1080 Ti or 1080, while the less powerful cards will ship with the aforementioned GDR5 or 5X. If NVIDIA is deciding to release the Volta cards with GDR6 instead of 5X or HBM, then that could also be another reason that they've decided to hold up the hype train. Maybe it isn't that they're being anti-consumer by milking Pascal or just outpacing AMD with no cash to all on investment, but rather they want what's best for us, and they think GDDR6 will really make that happen. Good guy in video, right? So basically, even after CES, even after the surprise drop of the Titan V, and even after AMD is really trying to spin their wheels to get Vega off the ground, we have no real substantial indication of what and when NVIDIA will stop selling the 10 series cards. NVIDIA really is doing a fantastic job at keeping its 2018 gaming cards well under wraps, and no one other than them has any concrete information to go on. It's all a speculation game at this point. I mean, heck, according to rumors making the rounds during the butt end of 2017, the cards might not even be built on the Volta architecture at all. Instead, the rumors claim that NVIDIA's upcoming gaming GPUs will be launched on an architecture called Ampere. It's an unlikely move considering Ampere wasn't on any of NVIDIA's GPU roadmaps and that it was just a translation error of Volta into another language and then back into English, but the rampant speculation just goes to show how little we really know. But whatever they decide to call their next-gen offerings, NVIDIA 
rarely releases new cards that don't markedly improve over what came before. And that alone is exciting considering just how phenomenal Pascal was and still is. While it's extremely disappointing that AMD doesn't seem to have anything planned to take on Volta cards in 2018, we can only hope that their Navi cards will deliver in 2019 where Vega failed so spectacularly last year. Infinity Fabric linking the GPU with the CPU and creating some of the best gaming experiences we've ever had thanks to low level API support. Yes, please. Until then, I'm sure Nvidia will take full advantage of their head start, possible price gouging and all. And listen, I for one am slightly fed up with Nvidia's dominance in the market. I wish AMD was competitive. I wish Vega was butt spankingly impressive and that it wrecked everything Nvidia was releasing, but it wasn't. And now instead of getting something good out of AMD, we're being told by fanboys across the world, no, Vega was never meant to beat Pascal. It was always meant to be equal. And the real gaming architecture will be Navi. Just you wait and see. Infinity Fabric with Navi will be revolutionary. But honestly, it's the same old story. AMD's promises going unfulfilled yet again and us being told to hold on. The real promise fulfillment is actually coming. And I'm just sick of it. Thankfully, Ryzen wasn't act was actually respectable or else I would have lost all faith in AMD. But given that the CPU and GPU divisions aren't really exactly the same in the company, I have little hope for what the RTG side of things can actually pull through for gamers. Probably they should just stick to making the best mining cards they possibly can because that's really all AMD is good for at this point. But what do you all think? You hyped for Volta? Can't wait to drop dough on that precious price premium powerhouse? What have you been your favorite and most enticing rumors about either Volta or Navi? Let me know either down in the comments or over on Twitter, I am at UF Disciple. Be sure to smash that like button if you enjoyed this video and you want to see more rumor analysis vids going forward. Subscribe to stay up to date on all of our tech related content. I am Brett with the UFD Tech channel. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all in the next video. Cheers. Good job, Brett. I'm proud of you. That was really well performed. I think that was one of the most hyped videos you ever did because AMD is really only good for making mining cards, you know? They're not really good for much else. Holy crap, we're gonna get a bunch of comments for that. I can't believe I said that. Oh, it's gonna be amazing. I love it. I love it.